Like was discussed in the last video, when we look at revenue in theory of the firm, it very much is related to what we call demand theory. And you can derive everything about revenue from demand theory. Keep in mind that when we talked about the law of demand way back when, that one of the reasons for the downward slope of the demand curve was, other than the income effect and the substitution effect, quick quiz, uh, was the law of diminishing marginal utility or the marginal utility effect. And remember what that said was that as you consume something more and more and more, you enjoy it less and less. Therefore, you would pay a lower and lower price or lower and lower maximum price for that good. So again, we see that in a demand schedule that again, for higher and higher quantities to be demanded, and this would be one, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth, for that to occur, because the marginal utility is decreasing, the price would also have to decrease. And this is why, in theory of the firm, we often won't even call this price, but instead we'll just call it average revenue, because the price is always going to be equal to the average revenue if there is no price discrimination, which was also talked about in the last video. Keep in mind that this is going to hold true for any firm that isn't a perfect competition. And in our theory, our assumption is that there aren't really any perfect competitions. Therefore, this is true for really for every firm that is out there. So keep in mind, we are talking about the demand curve that a single firm faces. Again, it's theory of the firm. And we're trying to explain what happens to a firm when they change their prices. So this is kind of overall for everybody, but it will be its significance will change based on the type of firm that we're talking about. Okay, let's go from this real quickly and let's figure out total revenue. So remember, total revenue is just the price times the quantity demanded, so it's going to be 10, 18, and something significant happens right here. We notice that the amount of this change, hmm, I wonder if we'll talk about that, goes down and down and down and eventually total revenue has not increased at all. So this point would correlate to this highest point of total revenue on this diagram. Well, we need to figure out exactly what is causing the difference between those changes. And remember, that's what our marginal revenue is. So marginal revenue is the change. Well, remember here, the change from zero to 10 is 10. The change from 10 to 18 is eight. From 18 to 24 is six. 24 to 28, four, two, and zero. And it's from this right here, the marginal revenue, that we derive a very important uh, understanding of the relationship between average revenue, which again is the same as price, if there's no price discrimination. And so the relationship between average revenue and marginal revenue. Let's look at price real quickly, or average revenue, and we notice that here, average revenue falls by one each time. It goes down by one, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, so on and so forth. And I could have gone further down, but I just didn't need to. However, what we notice is that marginal revenue, it doesn't change by one. It doesn't go from 10 to nine. Instead, it goes from 10 down to eight. So instead of changing by one, it changes by two. Now that's a very significant conclusion because you always uh, have to keep that in mind, that these two curves, the marginal revenue curve is derived from the average revenue curve. And because there's no price discrimination, essentially what happens is this. If I have to lower the price one to get two people to buy it, I don't know who would have paid the higher price. So instead of just lowering the price by one, well, that's true, but I have to charge both people nine. So I get one less from the person who would have bought it at 10 before, and I get one less, nine instead of 10, from the new person who's going to buy it because I don't know who is who. So this two to one relationship, and when I say two to one, I mean the change in marginal revenue against the change in average revenue or price. It's reflected in the fact that the marginal revenue curve is twice as steep. So no matter what, whatever this distance is, if I go from here to here on the x-axis for average revenue, then halfway in between that should be the point where marginal revenue is cutting through. And it's really important that you draw it that way. Even if you draw a more elastic demand curve like this, you need to show that the marginal revenue curve is twice as steep. If I drew this coming down like this, that would be much more than twice as steep, and that would be wrong. 
if I draw a relatively inelastic demand curve. Likewise, I don't want to put marginal revenue over here. It needs to cut the x-axis about halfway between the origin and wherever um, the A variable is. Okay, let's get to the diagram now and see some things on here. So we've got it labeled as revenue, and I, I made two different diagrams because what you'll typically find is that the y-axis values for total revenue are going to be much larger than these values, and it's difficult to graph them all three together. So one important correlation that comes out of this, and it relates to things that we've talked about numerous times. What we see is that where marginal revenue is zero is where total revenue is maximized. Well, remember, that makes sense. What we're saying is the change from here to here was nothing, and after that, if we follow this pattern, it's going to start to decrease. So if you add nothing to the total revenue, well, then the total revenue doesn't grow. But every point above this, even though marginal revenue is falling, marginal revenue is still positive. So if I add something positive to something else positive, even if it only gets bigger by a little bit, it's still going to get bigger. So this point where marginal revenue cuts through the x-axis always correlates to the top or the highest point of total revenue. Then from there, if this is the highest point of total revenue, then we already know something about that. We talked about it a long time ago in, uh, when we studied elasticities, uh, specifically when we studied PED. Remember that if we go straight up from this point, then this has to then be the point where total revenue is maximized on the demand curve itself. Well, if that's the point where total revenue is maximized, then it's got to also be the point of unit at elasticity. And we talked about before that the point, of, the point of unit elasticity is always uh, the midpoint of the demand curve, which goes back to what we already said. If this is cutting halfway through that space on the x-axis from the demand curve, well then it makes sense that obviously that's going to be the midpoint on the demand curve itself. That's just geometry. So, bottom line, no matter what, take this away from this video. When you draw this or sketch this, make sure that you show this two-to-one relationship. It's one of those things that you ought to be able to explain. It's a pretty small part of theory, but it's a very important part of theory. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below.